Oklahoma winters can bring anything from extreme cold to snow and ice. After several years of mostly mild winters, parts of green country saw 10 inches of snow last February. That record-breaking month gave Tulsa its longest stretch of snowy days, as well as most consecutive days below freezing during any February. In October 2020, a storm system that dropped a massive amount of ice just to our west brought cold rain to our area. One year later, late season severe weather swept through. There he is. It's tornado a tornado. Bringing more tornadoes during October and November than in our traditional spring severe weather season. With such a big swing in our weather over the past year, we're looking ahead to this winter. Let's start out with folklore and, of course, weather forecasting. And it's a lot of fun. And persimmon seeds seem to be the number one thing that I get the pictures most of off of Facebook. And when you cut a persimmon out and cut the seed in two, you can see that it's either the shape of a spoon, a knife, or a fork. Spoon means wet, knife means cold, fork means fairly mild. Well, most of the pictures I've received on Facebook have been coming back with spoons and knives. That means wet and cold. The Old Farmer's Almanac for this year, it's talking about dry and cold. But what about the woolly worm? Well, brown woolly worm means mild, and guess what? Most of the pictures have been coming in have been mild. It's kind of confusing, but what does science have to say? So the very first thing that we're going to do is go to the North Pole, because believe it or not, some of the weather that's up there greatly affects what's going to happen in the United States, and that includes us here in Oklahoma and in Tulsa. So one of the biggest things that we have to look for is the amount of snow. And the amount of snow is going to be very much a big factor in what's going on. Snow extends all the way down to the U.S. border. That's a big deal. But the snow cap is even a bigger deal. So let's take a look at that, first of all. And one of the biggest parts about the snow cap and the North Pole is the fact that there has been a lot of melting of snow. You probably saw it in the news. And as we went from the spring to the summer and into the early fall, watch how this just shrinks in the North Pole. And as that happens, yeah, the polar bears probably don't like it too much either. But it also is influencing our thought process of what's going on in the world of weather. 1980 to 2010, this is the average outline of where the snow cap should have been. That is not really where it is at this time. But it is expanding, and with that snow, it's interesting to note that the amount of snow and sea ice, that affects our air temperature, which in effect it affects our cold air availability and also the amount of cold outbreaks. All right, so we know that part. But what about the fact that you do have a little bit more snow, you have lesser snow? It's kind of interesting how these all play together. So with higher amounts of snow and lesser amounts of snow, everything is a little bit different. And what we're talking about is that less cold air is available when you have lesser snow or sea ice. But the question is, why is there so much snow? And so that is probably our biggest question because we had a rapid expansion of snow across the areas that I just showed you across Canada and Alaska and trying to move into the United States. So as we put this all together, here's what's happening. Earlier and more cold outbreaks are possible when you have larger snow expansion. This could be stopped and it should be. And I'll explain more of that coming up in a little bit. First of all, though, what we want to do is understand a little bit more about how this all works together. The snow and ice extent means it's affecting the ocean temperature, which affects the ocean currents, which affects the weather patterns. That makes sense. Then we're talking about ocean temperatures. What are they doing right now? Well, we have to look off into the Pacific. And this zone is either warmer than normal, colder than normal. Sometimes it's normal. This time, it's colder than normal. What does that mean? That means La Nina. Last year was La Nina. But don't freak out yet because we don't want a historic February type of situation developing here. La Nina is present now. It's been strengthening for the last 30 days. And there's a 90% chance that it'll continue through the winter, maybe into the spring. So where does that leave us? Well, normally that leaves us a little bit drier than normal, more wet to the east, jet streams to the northwest. What about temperatures? Temperatures are usually warmer than normal when we have a La Nina. Last year we had a La Nina and it got really cold in February. That's because we had cold air breaking out. And when cold air breaks out, occasionally that will happen again this year. We expect that to happen two to three times. That's that bitter cold air. We don't expect it to stay as long as the February one did, but what happens as well when we get ice and snow? Well, usually we'd love to have the cold air in place in order to get a storm system coming in. That allows for a better chance of forecasting actual snow or ice conditions, but those are going to be rare this winter. It could happen though once or twice. So our December outlook right now appears to be warmer than normal and drier than normal with everything happening the way it is at this time with the jet stream. And as we look on into the next 30 days, there isn't a whole lot going on. There is a slight chance we could have a few snow flurries around Christmas. But what about winter for December, January and February? 
warmer than normal across a big chunk of the country and drier than normal. But what does that mean for our area right around Tulsa, northeast Oklahoma, and southeast Kansas, and northwest Arkansas? Temperature wise should be mild to warmer than normal. Precipitation, what does that mean? Well, it means that we're going to be less than normal, more than likely. That's not good because we have drought situations and that could increase our drought and our fire danger. And what about the chances of ice? Well, with precipitation down, the chances of actually having precipitation and also hitting the ice and the cold at the same time, pretty slight. And snow, if you love snow, well, we don't have a great forecast for you. Averaging snow is about eight and a half to nine inches. We expect that to be near, but more likely slightly below, unless we're just plain lucky and you love snow. That's your winter forecast.